A polygon is a figure that has many sides. A polygamist is a guy who has many brides. But there's another poly word to which this song refers. It's something called a polymer. Long, long chains, the biggest molecules we know. Made of many monomers lined up in a row. So there you heard a clip from a song called Long, Long Chains by Mike Offit on polymers. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A little bit on polymers. We're going to make one of our own polymers here. And we're going to start out with, uh, what do we have here? Sodium silicate solution. And you've put 20 milliliters in there? Okay. And then you've got about 5 milliliters of ethyl alcohol. And we're going to mix those two right now. And while she's mixing it, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so we're going to mix it up. So we're going to make some polymers. And the word there is polymer. Poly means many. It comes from the Greek, which is what most think, unfortunately, most kids think chemistry is all about. It's Greek to them. And mer means small unit or part. So a polymer is many parts, and they're joined together. Much like a bicycle chain is made up of little mers or uh, parts, and they're all joined together to make the entire bicycle chain, which you could think of as a polymer, a long chain molecule. Normally, we think of it in terms of carbon. Carbon, we know, is tetrahedral. And these carbon units can join together. These little monomer units can join together to form a long chain molecule. Well, it turns out silicon. <clears throat> you want to uh, form that into a sphere now? She has made a polymer, which we're going to talk about right now, but we're going to form this into a sphere. So this takes a little bit of action on her part to make this. So I'm going to have her do that. I'm going to have her do it on this paper. That way, if anything spills, it won't necessarily stain the countertop. And that, that's good. There's a couple other things while I'm on this part. I use these plastic disposable cups because then everything can be tossed out when you're done. If you use glassware, you can clean it up, but with this type of material, it takes a long time and it's not something I want to do. I actually use paper cups when I do it. Paper cups, these are calibrated, so they're a little more expensive, but you can get them at uh, Flynn or you can get them even at the uh, drugstore. They're calibrated here and um, they just can be tossed when you're done without having to clean up because the liquids aren't easy to clean out. This one is anyway. And the paper cups are even cheaper and those you can just put a mark on where it should be the amount because it's only approximations that you need here. Well, as I said, carbon occurs in a tetrahedral unit and silicon's in the same family. So you can get a, a silicates are SiO4 with a minus. And they're not in solution here. They're not necessarily polymers, but we make a polymer when we join the silicate, the sodium silicate, with the ethyl alcohol. We form some water, and then the silicates join together. We get a polymer chain, something like this. With the silicates, the R would be the ethyl part, and we've got some oxygens in there yet. And if we roll this up, this polymer will cut, turn into a ball, which will actually bounce rather nicely. And this long chain molecule has some super ball characteristics if you get a sphere like this. So when I use these in my class, um, this was an activity that only some classes got to do. Because I, at my school, a couple of times a year, the administrators or the, the school district would get an idea. We're going to cut out two periods and you can make those up some other time during the year, but you'll meet with your next four classes. Maybe they'd cut out the last two or the first two or sometimes the middle two. And then they'd say, just think of something creative to do with those kids. This is one that I would do because it was interesting, fun, and they actually learned some chemistry. So I'd have the kids make this, and then we'd have a little contest to see which sphere bounced the highest. If they don't join together well, you can get them moist with some water and they can get it nice and smooth on the surface. How's yours doing? It's not, not great. 
Not great, but you still could be a winner if it hits at the right angle. And this time the A students weren't always the winners in this case. The other thing that uh, you should know, if you let this sit, it'll tend to flatten out after a while. So it needs, the contest needs to be done right away. So I've got several extinguished teachers here. So come on up, guys. Are you ready with yours? We're going to have a little contest, and I would bring the kids up. I'd have a mark on, I'd mark, uh, on the wall where theirs went. The, higher, the highest bounce in each class won some kind of an award or extra credit, whatever I felt like doing at the moment. And kids usually got into that sort of thing. So here, in order to speed things up, we're all going to drop it from the same height. Just drop it, Jesse. No, like last time, going down, throwing it down. On the count of three, we're all going to drop it. And the one that bounces the highest will be declared the winner. And uh, you're going to, one of you two can declare the winner. One, two, three. Whoa! Jesse. <laughs> oh, you caught yours. It bounced that high? Of course. All right. I don't know if there was a clear winner in that case. But as you can see, these are almost, but not quite, super ballish, like in there. That one, that one was really good. So I'm going to declare myself the winner, Jesse. Here, well, just between Jesse and I. Ready now? One, two, three. You are the winner. I am. Thank you. This is a very fun activity. You learn something about bonding, tetrahedral shapes, and something different besides carbon.